Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 10WT Friday, where every single week we teach you how to form the healthy habits that will transform your body and your life. You see, in order to transform, you have to go through a process, you have to, one, start with your why, two, set your goals, three, identify your weekly behaviors that will get you to your goals, four, track your progress on a scoreboard, and five, set micro habits each week that set you up for success. If you do these five steps, I promise you your habits are going to turn rock solid, your self-confidence is going to skyrocket, and you'll be on the path to your best you. Every single week, we help individuals who are hungry for growth optimize their potential. I'm your host, Nick Carrier, and I'm really excited to talk about today how to make sure that we prevent knee and ankle injury. The goal of the Best You Podcast is to allow you to feel confident about what you need to do, why you need to do it, and how to do it in order to get closer and closer to your best you. Knee and ankle injuries are things that can plague so many people on their health and fitness journey. They can, not only are they frequent, but they're lasting and they're nagging. And we want to make sure that we have as few of those things as possible. And if you're somebody who already has had a knee or an ankle injury and it has been nagging you, then these will help you also make sure that it's not nagging as much as well. I know from personal experience, I've sprained a few ankles. Luckily, nothing too terrible from an ankle standpoint. I've definitely had a couple of injuries that have set me back from that, but nothing too lasting. From a knee standpoint, I did tear my ACL back in 2017, which was, man, talk about a frustrating experience because it just puts you out for so long. And the recovery is just tough and it's painful. And it's something I wouldn't really wish anybody on, wouldn't wish on anybody. And so I want to make sure that you minimize the likelihood of any kind of ankle and knee injuries. And this is something that I've learned a lot about recently. I actually just became certified as a corrective exercise specialist, and this is what it's all about. It's making sure that we move in the correct manner. We are ensuring that we have the right muscle groups that are firing, and we have the right muscle groups that are being strong and strengthened so that we can move in the right way, so that we have proper movement patterns, so that we are preventing injury. And so as a corrective exercise specialist, I'm starting to learn so much about knee and ankle problems and most importantly, learn about how to prevent those things moving forward. So really excited to share these with you guys today. Four things on how to prevent knee and ankle injuries. Number one is foot strengthening exercises. There are intrinsic foot muscles that are really responsible for stabilizing the foot and making sure the ankle is stabilized as well. And so a foot strengthening exercise for an example of it might be with if you're on your bare feet and you might be sitting down. You're on bare feet sitting down. You have a towel underneath one of your foot, underneath one of your feet that you're trying to strengthen. And then you try to scrunch that towel with your with the with your claws with your feet and then release. And then scrunch that towel and squeeze it and then release. I'm kind of I'm doing that right now while I am filming this episode. I'm squeezing and I'm scrunching my face like I'm scrunching my foot and then I'm releasing. It's going to strengthen those intrinsic foot muscles, which helps with balance. And it also helps to stabilize the foot and the ankle. So foot strengthening exercises are key. And so it's not just foot strengthening exercises, but it's also doing single leg exercises and really barefoot exercises as well. Because what are you doing when when you're on one foot? You're not just spending the same amount of time on one area of your foot, right? You're kind of, you're when you're trying to balance, you're spending a little bit of time on all areas of your feet. And so what are you doing? You're kind of gripping the floor. It's kind of a similar idea as to the towel scrunch exercises. You're kind of gripping the floor and you're strengthening all the intrinsic foot muscles in all the areas of your feet and not just one small concentrated area. So foot strengthening exercises, like the one I talked about, the towel scrunching exercising exercise, but also doing single leg exercises and especially barefoot exercises. Second thing to do to prevent knee and ankle injuries are what I call wall tibia raises, but you're strengthening your anterior tibialis or that muscle right there in the front of your shin. It's funny, I think a few years ago, I would have never thought about strengthening this muscle group because it seems like such a small muscle group, such a meaningless muscle group and and an extra muscle group that I'm like, I don't even really know how to exercise this just a few years ago, but it's something that I do at least three times a week now are anterior tibialis exercises, mostly uh, mostly being wall tibia raises. And so again, that's strengthening that front shin muscle that helps with ankle stability, that helps with knee alignment, and it helps with deceleration. And so 
when it comes to ankle stability, again, all the muscles that are around your ankle help to strengthen the stability of it. And so we want to make sure that we strengthen that, that muscle group that is directly above the ankle on the lower, the front lower leg. And it helps with knee alignment in the sense that if you are, if you've ever seen somebody walking and their knee caves in slightly, or if they're running or they're squatting and their knee caves in slightly, a couple of reasons for that is because their external rotators are not, are weak. Their external rotators, so your anterior tibialis, that shin muscle, is an exterior rotator of the knee. Your glute medius, the outside part of your butt cheek, is an external rotator of your knee. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But your your anterior tibialis is an external rotator. And so if your knee is constantly misaligned every time that it strikes the ground, then you're putting more and more pressure in areas of the knee that you don't want to be putting pressure in. And so to prevent that, you want to make sure that you strengthen the external rotators and that anterior tibialis. And like I said, it also helps with deceleration. Deceleration. Each time you're running and you're landing on the floor, it's a combination of decelerate and accelerate, decelerate and accelerate, decelerate and accelerate. And when you decelerate, that force needs to go somewhere. And oftentimes, if that anterior tibialis muscle is not firing, then the force is just being distributed to the knee. And so it's just over time, just uh, pounding on the knee rather than any force being absorbed by that anterior tibialis. And so you need to strengthen that muscle so that force gets absorbed by that muscle. And so it's not purely pounding on the knee. So second thing to do to how to prevent knee and ankle injuries is strengthen your anterior tibialis, mainly from what I like to do is wall tibia raises. Number three, I already touched on it, is strengthen your glute medius. So that's the outside part of your butt cheek. And a couple simple exercises. Throw on some mini bands on your legs and do some band lateral walks. Any kind of lateral movement on your feet is going to help to fire that glute medius muscle, but especially when you do specific isolated strength training for that muscle group, like band lateral walks, like lateral step-ups, like lateral lunges. There's just a few examples of exercises that help target that glute medius. Because it's, look, it's one of those things where that's not a natural movement pattern that we do. Most of the time we just move in what's called the sagittal plane, just forward and backwards on a daily basis. We don't often move in what's called the frontal plane, lateral, side to side on a regular basis. And so because we don't do that, we're never targeting those muscle groups and never strengthening those muscle groups. That's why I believe so strongly that so many athletes tear their ACLs because they're just so focused on going as heavy as they can on things like squats, on things like deadlifts, because they're moving in the sagittal plane so frequently and maybe not training as much in the in the lateral movement, in the frontal plane. Now, they're obviously doing that some, and there's a lot of other reasons why athletes have ACL injuries other than just not having a strong enough glute medius, but a little bit beside the point, it's for a longer story or a uh, longer episode to the podcast, but glute medius is a really important exercise to strengthen for knee alignment as well. And then the last thing I want to say to help prevent knee and ankle injuries, number four, is train like you live. What I mean by that is this. Do you play pickleball? Do you run after your kids at all? Do you run down the stairs? Are you doing anything that requires, are you playing in any intramural sports? Are you doing anything that requires you to move somewhat quickly, somewhat laterally, sometimes spending time on one foot, right? For example, my parents play pickleball. And so they need to be doing some exercises that that are similar to how they play pickleball. And that's spending time on one foot. That's moving laterally. That's stopping and starting and jumping. And spending, like I said, jumping maybe sometimes on one foot. And so the more that you can train like you live, the less your body is going to be surprised and ill-prepared when you do these things like play pickleball, chase after your kids, run down the stairs. If you can have already done those things and strengthen the appropriate muscles that are used in those sorts of living activities, then the less likely you are to experience any kind of injury. And so you want to train like you live. You want to do the things. I think I think a lot of people don't do when they're older, maybe like I said, pickleball, for example, just because it's fresh off the top of my head, a lot of people don't do agility exercises. Or a lot of times people don't do single leg exercises. Or a lot of times people don't do any kind of jumping exercises because they're older and they think, I don't need to do that anymore. But you are still kind of doing it to a certain extent. And you probably are going to have to jump at some point in your life, whether it's jumping off the edge of a driveway, jumping off of a curb, whatever the jumping is, jumping over something that your grandkid throws. You are going to have to jump and you, your body needs to prepare to, to do so. So we need to train like 
we live. So again, guys, four ways to prevent knee and ankle injuries. Number one, foot strengthening exercises like the towel scrunch exercise or barefoot single leg exercises. Number two, we need to strengthen our anterior tibialis like wall tibia raises that front shin, front, sh- front shin muscle, excuse me, is really important for ankle stability, knee alignment, and deceleration. Number three, we need to strengthen our glute medius, the outside part of our butt cheek. Throw some bands on your lower legs and do some lateral walks. Number four, we need to train like we live. Don't wait to go to the pickleball court for that to be the first time in years for you to do any kind of agility movements. Train like you live to decrease the likelihood of injury. Man, oh man, I mean, injury prevention is one of those things that is really tough because there's no outcome from injury prevention. There's hopefully just a lack of an outcome. Hopefully there's just a lack of an injury from doing it. But if there is a lack of a tangible, physical, seeable outcome, that oftentimes leads us to not doing it. And so we need to find a way to have faith and believe in the importance of these sorts of exercises because they will come in handy. Because if you get injured and it nags, that's going to be a huge obstacle that you're going to have to work through or overcome in your health and fitness journey. And that's, we just don't... We want as few of people to have to overcome those types of things as possible. And you can overcome them if you're doing injury preventative type work. So make sure you share this with somebody who maybe doesn't do this kind of work. Make sure you share it with your friends, your family members who play pickleball but don't do any kind of agility moves. Send this to them so that they can continue to play pickleball. It's not to like call them out and be like, you don't do any of these exercises, look at you. No, it's like I want you to be able to continue to play pickleball for a long time. Do these exercises so you can Again, share this episode with them so that it helps get them get closer to their health and fitness goals. It helps you get closer to your health and fitness goals, and it helps you get closer and closer to your best you.